kept you all waiting, didn't I? Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to part 11 of Grandia. In the last episode, we met Pakun, the Avenger Society president, and found out that he is a complete douchebag. And now in this episode, we're going to go to Fetus House by crossing Merrill Road. Sometimes it pronounces Merrill with Y because spelling and translations is fun, isn't it? In this area, we will fight cobras, the occasional snakes that will cast Diggin, a chicken, and a black widow. Those are your enemies in this entire area, and that's all you're going to really see. There is a mana egg, and I will showcase where this mana egg is. And I'm just going to say that when you do get this mana egg, you should give Earth Element to Justin. And I'm, I'm just saying that beforehand, so when you guys see, like, random cutting, you guys are wondering what the hell I'm doing. But then again, you guys can probably see it on the screen. I know that my fans are not slow in the slightest. Sorry that this hasn't been uploaded for quite some time. I have been, as usual, I, if you guys follow my Twitter, I end up saying, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and upload Chrono Cross on the weekend, because once it's finished, I can continue what I was doing with these other games, because I'm a sheep. Yeah. I mean, I might as well have completed the game, to be honest. I was close. I mean, Chrono Cross, at this point, is done. It's over. We're finishing the game. And then I can now focus on two LPs. Note to self, guys. Don't do three LPs, or else you're really going to hate yourself. But now that one RPG is out of the way, we can focus on this RPG and also finish Bayonetta 2. Once Bayonetta 2 is finished, however, I don't know what else I'm going to do on this because I don't want to just focus on Grandia alone. I kind of want to have something else that can kind of make some sort of entertainment value. Trying to figure something out. I don't know what, but eh, who knows. Since there's not really much happening on screen aside from me running around and doing absolutely nothing, <laughs> I guess I could go ahead and Give my bit of history on how I got into Grandia as a whole. Well, to be fair, how I got into Grandia, it was pretty interesting. First off, I didn't own the game. And my brother owned the game instead. So I took the copy because I wanted to play it myself because he was up to the second disc. So I popped in that first disc. At first, uh, before I continue... Be sure to, whenever you get out of battle and take some damage, be sure to always use the water spell to heal Sue or Justin so that you can be able to level up the water spell effectively. It's recommended for, you know, trying to level up water a little bit more, uh, much better. All right. Glug birds. That's weird. Such a weird, odd enemy. But they can be, um, this, they can be... They can be destroyed easily by just our amazing characters. Except for Justin. Justin is still not up to snuff. Don't worry. He will, though. Alright. So, I popped in that first disc. Found out that it had voice acting. I was like, oh my god. This was before I played Sonic Adventure. So, hearing voice acting in a video game was a bit alienated to me at first. And I was like... Oh my god, voice acting, what is this? This is so cool. And then I got to a bunch of other portion part of the game where um, I just fought like the, the squid, the king squid boss and it kicked the crap out of me. And I was like, what? Like, what happened? I, I, don't, I don't understand this game. Because the thing is about this game is that it doesn't really teach you how to play it. Like... At all. Not to my knowledge. I haven't really... I don't know if there's any tutorial for this game that says, Hey, do this. This is how you fight. Like, unlike Chrono Cross, which actually does teach you how to play the game, Grandia doesn't really teach you how to play it. You just have to figure it... You, got, you just have to figure it out yourself. Which is a bit problematic for some people who are not, you know, into the whole turn-based RPG aspect of things. And don't get me wrong, I can understand that being a bit of a problem. Like, this is kind of one of the first games that had an act and wait system. And, you know, it's fine for the most part. And once you learn the tricks and the trade of the battle system, 
it becomes relatively easy to a point where everything is perfectly um, manipulated. Like, every single monster in this game are not hard on the slightest. It's the bosses that will give you more trouble than the monsters. The monsters are just experience fodder. Uh, well, even though you will see Sue get to like almost critical health, but that's only because she has the weakest, she has the lowest HP of the group as of right now. So, yeah. Like, she had her vitality is 14. She's like literally a bug Pokemon in the group. She is lower than a Weedle and a Caterpie. And she won't evolve into a Butterfree. And she will never evolve into a massive, awesome Beedro. Now, here I am showing you guys the experience of the, the weapons and how I end up distributing. I take forever in the menu, so I cut that out. Because, as usual, like I said, I don't want to go ahead and have too much of myself in the menus. Because, I, I, at this rate, I'm going to just call Grandia Menu. Episode Menu. Trust me, it's not fun. It's annoying and it's tedious of how long it takes to get through these menus. Because sometimes I don't even know where I'm going half the time. Anyways, once I've gotten past the first disc of Grandia, because, spoiler alert, there's two, obviously. I got to the second disc. And it was actually pretty interesting. Because the story itself is relatively engaging. And when I played it a second time off of the PSP Go... Yeah, I, I was one of those scrubs that had the PSP go and didn't really get an actual PSP because I was an idiot. I ended up enjoying Grandia, for the second disc portion, up until a certain point. Like, I would say this. When I played the game a second time, I sucked, even to this day. I could not focus on the battle system. I didn't get it. And... The fact that when I couldn't beat it the first time, when I got to the when I got to the second disc and the final area of the second disc and I managed to defeat the boss finally, I was like, yes, it is finished. And this is way before I played Final Fantasy games or um Chrono Trigger effectively, and I didn't realize that there was a second form to said final boss. I was like Oh my god, and he had like 900 and he had 9,999 HP and I was like Are you serious? Because <laughs> that was my first time Because none of the bosses in the game has that threshold of a health bar and I was like Ah damn, and I had no healing items left. It was like fighting the elite four in on in um, hyper mode now I go back to the shop and end up buying the Earth spell for Justin and giving it to him. And then we just cut back to Fina's house. So now we're in Fina's vicinity. Now we're going to go ahead and um, see her house. She seems to have herself a very fancy turtle. Just like every other Adventure Society douchebag. All the Adventure Society people are mean. Hmm, so this is Fina's house, eh? Looks like a really well built house. Cool, this furniture looks like was handmade by Fina. Yeah, I know. It's pretty awesome, isn't it, Sue? How come you don't handmade stuff? Like, what's wrong with you? Hey, what's this pink stuff? Ooh. Sue, don't go around touching stuff. Fina might get mad at you. Hmm? These are... Those are some very big, giant panties for Fina. And not to be a little bit rude or anything, but she's kind of... Her model doesn't really look that big. No offense. Oh, well, this is awkward. You guys ever had those moments where you just grab somebody's, some women's panties and then, you know, she ends up finding out? And luckily enough, this is not the real world, so Justin's not going to get slapped in the face. Unless it was a particular anime where he will get slapped in the face. But, he's not going to get slapped because, you know, Justin's fine. Also, Fina's older than Justin, just to, you know, for the record. I'm just saying that now. For once, it's a bit of a reverse. Fina is old. The, the 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 other character is older than the male character. Usually, it's always the other way around. You know, I don't know, cause something tells me that Tifa might know. Uh, I don't know. Tifa probably could have been older than Claude. Or uh, no, I know Aerith is older than Cloud because Aerith was in the prequel. Um, I don't know. 
no, no. You know what? I don't even know. What the hell? Into- no, 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 no. I'm right. I think Eris was, Aerith, whatever, was um older than Cloud because Zack was older than Cloud. Or, you know what? Who cares? They're characters. Who cares about age? Because apparently it's just like, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog where the only character age that they care about is Sonic and they don't even give a crap about Tails. Anyways, Sheena... Uh, Sheena. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh, Fina ends up telling her, telling us that um, she does not like Popcorn because Popcorn is indeed creep. But we already knew that already. So we try asking Fina if, you know, can we try to figure out anything to get to the to the ruins? But the Adventure Society's president is a blubbering idiot and he has major issues. But sadly, Fina can't really help us because she wants to be bounded by rules and crap. Like, seriously, I don't, you know, if Pokemon was like that, where you had to be bounded by rules to go on Pokemon Adventure. That would be by far the most stupidest thing in my life. Oh, you cannot go on a Pokemon Adventure because you can only carry three Pokemon with you, and they must all be the same type. I want electrical type because I am a massive douche. But no, in all honesty though, Fina is all fixated on the rules because she thinks that if she breaks the rules, she can't be, she can't go on her adventures anymore. But of course, Justin here is going to try to convince her that, hey, we're adventurers. Rules can be broken as long as we don't have to worry about anything. As long as we're not getting killed or murdered out there, rules can't really save us. Because I'm pretty sure that rules can't really save us from getting killed. It's like, oh, you follow the rules. We shall guide you and not getting killed. I mean, seriously, if we're on the Adventure Society Guild of Justice, we might as well end up, you know, getting something better out of this. Uh, but before she ends up having a different recollection, what's that music? My dearest Fina, I've come for you. <laughs> yup, hey, yup. I heard someone say, hey, yup. Justin, that voice. Wait here, Justin. I'll take a look outside. No, Fina, it's a, uh, whatever. I. (laughs) She screamed like that? That's weird. (laughs) Anyways, let's go outside and go ahead and bash this popcorn in the face. Because he's being a creep. And nobody likes creeps. There, she's over there. Justin, look over there. (laughs) Go home, popcorn. I told you to never come here again. Ah, but tonight is the night when our hearts will be united. Once you and I are married, Fina, we can wash our underwear together as a couple. That is Vos... Vos? Yeah, Vos. Oh, don't be shy. I know that you're crazy about me, Fina. Anyway, if you don't marry me, I'm going to take away your adventures pass, so there. And if I do that, you can't go on any more adventures. Wow, that's very, um... That's very dickish. And blackmailing. And terrible. You're a sleazebag douche. What are you doing here at Fina's house? Are you a boyfriend or what? Uh, sure, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, boyfriend. That's what I am. I am Fina's boyfriend. And we're getting marred. <laughs> Yay, the marred. Paco's design reminds me of a Dragon Ball Z character. Then again, his name is also Pakun, which is not really a, a name ripped right out of the Dragon Ball, um... World's Strongest Heroes. But, whatever. That's too bad, my dear Fina. You've been claimed by that silly boy. You know what? I'll help you. This is the kind of thing I have my bodyguard along for. Mr. Chang, come on! Mr. Chang. Oh, this guy looks interesting. Eh, I'm pretty sure we can... We got ourselves a friggin' sword. We can beat this guy. Welcome, punch! You got knocked the fuck out, man! Well, never mind. I really thought that we could face him, but apparently Justin could not take a punch in the face. Or dodge out the way. <laughs> it's like, dodge, dude. Dodge, you know. Move to the left or right. You just... Uh, whatever. 
Anyways, guys, that is the end of this episode of Grandia. In the next episode, we're going to be heading into the church to save our dear Fida because no one likes forced marriages. Anyways, awkward pause aside. I'll see you guys next time. Laters!